Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Rideshare Stories. On this channel, we do a lot of different things within the rideshare industry, so if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications. But before we get started, if you have a crazy Uber Lyft experience, whether you're a passenger or a driver, record it, send it my way, and maybe we can feature you on the channel. So we are going to continue on with AB5 today. It needs a lot of coverage because of what it is. It has a lot of implications and a lot of changes uh, for this people in the state of California, whether it's Uber and Lyft as a company and the other industries it's going to affect, whether it's the drivers it's gonna affect, the legislation it's gonna affect. It's gonna affect the entire state, um, but it also could affect the uh, entire United States as well as the rest of the world. So it is a key landmark legislation bill that has just passed the Senate. It's gonna go back to the assembly and because it's passed the assembly, uh, it's very likely nothing major is going to happen in any way, shape, or form, but it's going to go to the governor's desk uh, where the governor has up until October 13th to sign it. Now, the governor uh, could sign it. He's voiced his uh, support for this bill, uh, but it doesn't mean he's going to actually do it because a lot of these companies have a lot of money. So if he's looking at trying to make a presidential run race, uh, you know, you're got to play both sides. So he's going to continue letting it slide probably up until um, October, into October, up to around uh, the 12th, 13th region. So it's probably going to be a little bit of time before that does sign into law. So Uber and Lyft have responded. Um, they've responded before the Senate had passed where they uh, both said that they would take $30 million uh, each uh, and, you know, create a 2020 ballot measure to try to get them exempt or to nullify AB5 altogether. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that, that ballot measure would look yet, um, but they pledged $30 million, and they said this before the Senate uh, had passed AB5, um, and they also had responded after the passing of AB5. They had done this yesterday uh, where they sent emails out, where they did press conferences and or, or press releases and made different changes. Um, so uh, Uber and Lyft have both responded differently. Whether you want to think it's fear-mongering or not, um, it's a possibility that both sides are true. So is it fear-mongering or is it the way it's going to be for that company? And the answer is yes. Um, both sides could be true. They could adopt um, however they want to adopt uh, the work uh, and how they want to uh, change their, their core, how they want to change uh, drivers into employees. However they want to do it, uh, it's going to be up to them. Uh, so if, if Uber responded the way they did and Lyft responded the way they did, both companies could in fact uh, be correct and we have to look at it as it's very possible that these things could happen, uh, but we don't really know for sure uh, because uh, it could be fear mongering. It could be, um, you know, so we got to take it with a grain of salt, but we also have to take it that it could be potentially what could, uh, what it could look like going forward if it does get signed and becomes law. Uh, and then when it goes into effect. So uh, that's also true. If, if it does sign into law, it's looking like it'll go into effect uh, January 1st, uh, 2020. Um, but there will be uh, probably a lot of court cases and the battles and um, the AB5 legislation, whether it passes into law or not, um, will be fought on both sides for probably a long time. Uh, so this is just really the beginning um, but yeah, it'll probably be going back and forth for a little bit of while. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's where Uber and Lyft, like I said, they've both pledged the $30 million each. Now Uber has stated yesterday, um, and after the passage of, uh, AB5 in the Senate that they would do everything at all costs. So that means they may pledge more money. They may put more money towards these uh, ballot measures or to, to fight EB-5. Uh, so they may in fact put a lot more money than just the $30 million uh, to try to fight this thing. Now, what did the emails look like? 
So the emails were both different on both sides. And like I said, is this fear mongering or is this how they're going to adapt and what they're going to do? Um, and the, the answer is, like I said, yes, <laughs> because we really just don't know. So Uber responded by saying, by sending out emails by saying, yes, it had passed, um, but we are not going to change anything. We are not going to change uh, how we operate as a company, how we operate to the drivers. You're going to continue as uh, how it is uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, and we are going to continue to fight this bill. So if you want to sign here. Uh, and this will go to the governor's desk uh, and voice your opposition towards it. That's essentially what their email had said. Now, Lyft responded a little bit differently by stating that uh, with the passage of AB5, certain things are going to be affected, like driving and shifts could be happening, um, driving for one company only, and driving in certain areas. So these few things could potentially be the way Lyft decides to operate. We really don't know yet, and nobody is going to know uh, yet. So is it fear-mongering to try to get you to sign this, to, to voice your opposition to the governor uh, and send it to the governor? Uh, it's possible, but it also could be possible that they are going to do it. Um, chances are they might it's it's very it's it's a very real possibility it's not guaranteed like i said they could uh, be fear-mongering other people have said they could be fear-mongering but again we just don't know yet so up until you actually know that says this is going to happen um, and this is how we're going to adapt and change things. And this is what you're going to start looking forward to. You know, continue operation as normal. Continue driving as normal. Um, do what you want to do, uh, whatever it is. Because currently, it still hasn't been signed. It could be vetoed. It could, um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that, that could be happening here. So, um, yeah, both companies have responded a little bit differently in terms of emails to drivers in California, um, but they've both responded by saying, hey, we are going to fight this as much as we can uh, and continue fighting it uh, to continue keeping the flexibility for drivers because that's really what matters, right? Um, so... Then wrapping up what Uber and Lyft has uh, said to drivers and committed to, to that, um, Uber has uh, also stated that they will, uh, that drivers are not in their core, they're not the core of uh, their business, uh, which, is that a slap in the face? Um, yeah, it could be, um, but is it them trying to you know, weasel their way in saying that this won't pass the three-part test. I mean, it's a very uh, complex and major thing. So it's not something that you can look at just on the surface. It's something you really have to dive into and you really have to figure out. Now, is this going to affect a lot of people? The answer is no, it's not. So if you're watching this, and you're outside California, it's not going to affect you in any way, shape, or form unless uh, the state decides to try to bring about some sort of legislation that could be AB5 itself or like AB5, uh, very similar. So uh, it could be different. There could be different states that are adopting this. There could be different areas that look at this. Uh, so who knows what might happen? Um, but essentially, it is the wild west out there. It's a new frontier. It's very unknown in terms of the rideshare industry uh, and gig economy because it is this on-demand worker, meaning you go online when you want, you go offline when you want, um, and there's very limited amounts of actual independent contractor when you really look at it. And it's been exploited over and over because uh, a few years ago, Drivers were making pretty good money. Drivers were doing decent. There was no problems when it came to, um, you know, pay and it came to certain things. Today, it's much different because they're trying to nickel and dime and squeeze out 
as much as they can from drivers and pay them less and less. So that's where the problem is. And then also the rates that they're charging passengers continue to be the same or maybe even fluctuate higher and higher where Uber and Lyft are starting to take a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more each and every day. Um, so if you as a driver look at your pay breakdown, you see what Uber's take is, you see what Lyft's take is, and you see it continue to go up and up and up just a little bit more each and every day. Um, so yeah, it's something where, now not every day, let's be real, um, but over time it's going to continue going up and a little bit more and they're going to claim a little bit more because they can change the rates anytime they want. It doesn't really matter. They can do whatever. That's fine. Um, but it's not fine when it comes to drivers. And that's the big point right there. So again, I'm going to stay, say I am not in favor of AB5 only because there's certain things that could potentially happen that I don't want to be an employee. I don't want that. Um, I'm also part time doing this. So, you know, it's not going to affect me if I do other things. But drivers who are doing it full time, drivers who are relying on this uh, more, you know, yes, it can can really truly affect you and your bottom line. And if, let's face it, drivers just want to make more money. They want to be able to go out there, enjoy, have some fun. That's what it's all about. The concept of Uber and Lyft and rideshare is amazing. It's it truly is. It's it's so much fun. I enjoy doing it, but you know, dollars and cents come to it. And if you don't understand how you get paid and you don't understand your expenses, there could be a lot of drivers out there who are losing money when they go out and drive. Um, so yeah, you really want to pay attention to that. And like I said, I'm not in favor of AB5, but I'm in favor of stuff that makes that, that actually helps drivers, um, be better, uh, get better pay, get better protections, get better, get better things overall. You know, drivers cannot be pawns in the legislative uh, side of things and they cannot be pawns in Uber and Lyft side of things. You know, drivers are a force to be reckoned with. And if, if drivers do unite and come together, um, they can have major changes and they can have major um uh, implications on how Uber and Lyft operate. Um, so they could combine together. And no, you do not need an employment status to create some sort of union or some sort of unification. Um, you don't need that. You just need drivers who are sick and tired of, you know, having to agree to terms that could be uh, updated and changed constantly, uh, where you could be making less and less and less over time and there could be pay cuts and more pay cuts and the way pay structure has changed and all this that and the other thing um, so yeah I am for something that comes together and puts drivers uh, instead of being pawns but into the game and being able to create a better economy for themselves uh, and drivers overall uh, so that's one thing that we really need to do. We need to stand together and create some sort of unification uh, where we're all working together towards um, being better, towards making more money, towards better working conditions. So you're not going to be deactivated for a false report. So you're not going to be nickel and dimed for a ride. Um, so you're not going to be done for these things. So yes, I don't believe AB5 is the correct answer for drivers or an on-demand worker. I believe that it's got to be some sort of hybrid or something new needs to emerge. Um, something needs to evolve. And that's where we really need to, to focus and put the attention, put the energy. Um, so drivers out there, yeah, you know what? It might be unsure times, especially if you're in California, you might not know what's going to happen, but you always have the ability to unite and, and create something where, yeah, you could have a major voice. You could have a major uh, implication and change how Uber and Lyft operate 
as a company uh, or as companies individually, uh, how the rideshare industry works. Um, there could be a lot of different things there. So yes, make sure you unite, make sure you do things passengers out there too or people just in general who may just watch the channel to get entertainment value or whatever it might be um, passengers as well you know you need to wake up and realize that a hundred percent of of uber and lyft's fare that you take does not go to the driver in fact it could be a small portion um, of what the driver makes talk with your driver see what they think see what they feel um out there when when you do take rides uh but yeah it, it needs to be on the forefront of things so yes ab5 has uh twisted their arm and has uh made them kind of show their true colors on certain things and in, in different ways and different aspects uh and then you know it, it's kind of making them them feel a certain squeeze um, because before it was just, hey, this is what we're doing. You're going to like it whether, whether you want it or not. Um, so that can't happen anymore. Uh, it's not the way it should be. Sorry, I did go on a little bit of rant there, uh, but it is important. It is very important for drivers. It's important for passengers. It's important for everybody because you know what? Uh, just because uh, this channel or a few other channels that are talking about AB5 may be only rideshare related. It affects many more uh, places and many more industries than just the rideshare or gig economy. So it could affect different people. It could affect you. Um, but here's the big thing. Do your research, figure it out, see what works best for you and voice your opinion however it might be you can voice your opinion in the comment below in the comments below you could voice your opinion um you know anywhere you could voice your opinion to the governor of that of of california whether you're for ab5 or against it but whatever you are um that's that's your choice and that's your decision but you know what here's one last thing too don't hate on other people who are either for AB5 or against AB5 or somewhere in the middle or unsure. Don't hate on those people because they're drivers too. And essentially, we all just want to be better off. We all just want to make sure that we're, we are, uh, you know, making fair wages, that we are protected, uh, that we have safety in mind. So let's unite and be one body of drivers instead of, you know, having differences of opinions. Let's look at what's better for everybody, what, for drivers, you know, not just us uh, individually, but what's better for all drivers all over. Um, because what's better for all drivers is going to be better for you. So let's unite uh, and do it that way instead of being uh, in a divisional way. Um, but yeah, with that being said, that's the end of today's video. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for notifications so you'll be notified for all of our upcoming videos, including different coverage on AB5 uh, and just some crazy things that happen within Rideshare itself. Um, so make sure you do that. And as always, never drink and drive, always tip your drivers, and we'll see you next time.